Let's now have a look at the theme of order and disorder in the play King Henry IV Part 1. While well, anarchy is rife in Henry IV, both nobility and commoners alike challenge the established order. And there are two main rebellions happening really. The first one is between it is with the Percy clan. And they're rebelling against the king. They've got this plan to overthrow the king and put Mortimer on the throne. The second rebellion that's happening is with Prince Hal. He's rebelling against his father, the king's desires, and rebelling against his position, or not really taking responsibility for his position as a prince. He's not acting according to someone who should be the heir to the throne. And the play makes a point of the fact that both of these rebellions threaten the stability of the kingdom. Let's have a look at some of the key players in this theme of order and disorder. We'll start with King Henry IV. His grip on the throne is tenuous, as he himself was a rebel before coming the king. He deposed of Richard II and then disposed of him, or was it the other way around, in order to gain the crown. So he's been a rebel in the past as well. He knows what rebellions can do. He ensures uh, he is seldom seen by his people for fear that they may tire of him. He felt like that was something that Richard II did poorly, that Richard II was too... Um, you know, too common to his people. He was seen too much. So King Henry IV tries to avoid that. And this suggests that there's that dissent by the commoners is not uncommon. If the king needs to be wary of this, it gives a suggestion that order and disorder or disorder is quite a common thing that's going on. The Percy clan, they're known as the rebels. They plan to overthrow the king and crown Mortimer. They were key players in bringing King Henry IV into power in the first place. So they've got a bit of a, re a reputation of causing chaos or causing disorder or, or bringing anarchy. They've done this before with bringing King Henry into power. Uh, of course, Worcester lies to Hotspur about the king's offer of a pardon. So there's more disorder happening there. Even within the ranks of the rebels, there is rebellion. And Northumberland fails to show up to the battle so again there's suggestions on that side that there's a lot of disorder going on even amongst those rebels Hotspur one of the Percy clan he denies the king the prisoners he took in battle right at the start we see that happening he throws a tantrum over Mortimer uh, and plans to disobey the king when the king starts saying I don't want you to speak of Mortimer anymore while well, this sends um, Hotspur into a tantrum he plans on rebelling against this being quite disobedient he's a key player of course in the rebel uprising Against, against King Henry IV, and he leads these rebels at Shrewsbury. So he's a key player in disorder. The question you need to ask is, is he just a pawn in his uncle and his father's hands, though? So that's one question that can come out of this that you might want to think about. Prince Henry, well, he's acting contrary to his father's wishes, and his father is the king. There's a lot of disorder going on there, both as a son and as, you know, his father being his king. He's not acting appropriate to his station as prince and heir to the throne. There's rebellion, there's disorder there in the way he's behaving. He's involved in a robbery. Yes, it's a joke. Yes, it's a joke on his friends. Yes, he pays the money back, but we're talking about the heir to the throne here, a, a prince, someone in the royal family being involved in a robbery. Absolutely, that is out of order. And he's knowingly friends with criminals. While he may not do a whole heap of stuff that is criminal uh, himself, he's still hanging out with people that he knows are bad guys. These are criminals, they're thieves, and yet he's hanging out with them. There's disorder there with Prince Henry. Falstaff and his friends, well Falstaff is openly a thief, he's a blatant liar, these are all things that cause anarchy that can be seen as disordered. He and his friends are corrupting the prince, this is the heir to the throne, uh, a royal uh, member of the royal family, and they're corrupting him, that's out of order. He represents in this play the common man of England, now yes he's an exaggerated common man, but it's suggested that this is, and he makes these suggestions himself, that he's just like everybody else. So there's a strong suggestion that disorder is common in England at this time. He selects poor soldiers for battle, and this is for his own gain. When there's, you know, the, the king's rule and the king's life is on the line, he goes and chooses a, a bunch of guys that probably aren't fit to be soldiers. And he does this because it's going to help him. So there's some disorder going on there as well. Women, well here's an interesting one. How are women key players in disorder? Well, in fact all the women in the play are associated with disorder, are associated with anarchy in one way or another. The hostess, she runs a very questionable establishment that harbours criminals, so she's involved and, and helps the disorder that's going on in England. 
Lady Mortimer has married Mortimer, who was supposed to be on the king's side, but has, through this marriage to, to um, this Welsh woman, become the son-in-law to the enemy. So she's, um, you know, by association, and that association is marriage, so it's a pretty strong association, uh, involved in the disorder that is going on in the kingdom. And Lady Percy, she's married to the leader of the rebel uprising. So all of the women in this play are associated with disorder and anarchy in some way. So interestingly, as the play unfolds, order for the most part appears on the king's side, while disorder seems to increase on the side of the rebels. And by the end of the play, all disorder seems to either be redeemed, and we think of Hal, um, who starts to act in a way it should act, and Falstaff even promises to act more nobly. And so all the disorder either seems to be redeemed or defeated. So the rebels who were still rebelling, who were still out of order, they have been beaten at Shrewsbury. One question you want to ask out of all this is, what comment is Shakespeare making about disorder through all this? That's something you need to think about and come up with your own interpretation. A couple of things that are worth noting about this theme. Although the play depicts rebellion as a serious threat to the kingdom, disorder and unruliness are often portrayed as comical and ridiculous. So Shakespeare is making a serious comment about disorder and about rebellion, but he's also a lot of the time showing it in a comical or ridiculous way. Generally, each scene comments on the previous scene, and you should go away and have a look at this yourself and do a little bit of a study. For example, the prince's vow to redeem himself to the king and change his ways in Act 3, Scene 2, is followed by Falstaff's comical vow to repent in Scene 3. So go back and have a look through the scenes, have a look what's happening in one scene, have a look at the start of the next scene, and see how they comment on each other. Some questions you might want to ask about order and disorder. Why does King Henry admire Hotspur and disapprove, disapprove of Hal? Are both young men rebellious toward the king? What's the difference between them, if any? They're both rebelling against the king. Why is he more favorable of Hotspur rather than Hal? Here's another question. Is rebellion ever justifiable in the play? Why or why not? And thirdly, why do the Percys want to overthrow the king? If you're looking for an essay topic to answer in regards to this theme, well, here's one. In Henry IV Part 1, female characters are always associated with rebellion and disorder, which suggests that women are a threat to stability. Discuss. Well, that's order and disorder. Go away and have a think over some of those things, find some quotes, and come up with an interpretation for yourself about how you think this theme is being discussed in the play.